what was urgent before COVID, you know, is urgent also now. So we need to continue to care for this patient. You know, there are precautions that, that you can do, you know, complete triage, you know, testing patients before that, you know, wearing all the protective gowns, you know, and wear, and, you know, minimizing chair time, you know, doing, you know, teleconsultation, you know, beforehand yeah. to save some time. So, so, you know, you can modify your practice. And I think that that patients, you know, who need uh, this care, such as, you know, macular degeneration, you know, acute glaucoma, retinal detachments, you know, then, then uh, yes, but, uh, you know, cosmetic procedures and, uh, you know, to which I think that, that refractive surgery is, you know, I, I would just, uh, ju just, you know, wait and see and, and, and sort of be solidaire with, uh, with, with other people and uh, not overcrowd. California is an expensive area of, of America, but uh, on the other hand, you know, first do no harm seems to be the credo of many doctors. And so um, are you putting, you know, patients at risk by performing non-essential surgeries at this time? Are you putting uh, yourself, your, your workers at risk? Uh, these are questions that are, hmm, we kind of need to face, no? Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, it's, uh, uh, there are expenses associated even with uh, changing your, your practice because you need to, you know, reorganize your clinic, you know, your flow, you need to buy some extra protective equipment, you know, you need to, yeah. you know, install plexiglass and shields, you know, uh, on, on your slit lamps, you know, use more wipes and, and all that. So, so there are expenses and practices. But look, you know, times are different. People understand it, you know, there are always a uh, possibility of loans or, hmm. or, you know, to, to bridge this time. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think that, you know, staying, you know, a couple of months, maybe three months, you know, without this, you know, a business essential things, you know, I, I think that people, even in private practice, even in the expensive areas should be able to, to account for. Igor, have you had to have a hand in any of the surgeries going on uh, these days at all? Um, are, are you doing any emergency surgery work? What, what's, what's it like for you? Yeah, so, you know, with the injection procedures, you know, we continue to treat for diabetics. You know, di diabetes is, is the most prevalent in the world in, in the Middle East, okay? It's, it's a huge prevalence of, of diabetes and diabetic retinopathy. So there is large proportion of patients, and and so we continue injection therapy, um, you know, in in delayed intervals. But we do then macular degeneration that is done, and I did surgery for for diabetic vitreous hemorrhage in somebody who was monocular patient. Okay, that means he only had one eye, and all of a sudden he bled. So so that is now considered as you know as as emergency surgery. So, so I do approximately, you know, one emergency, you know, surgery in the OR per week okay. and few outpatient procedures. You know, I don't do yeah. lasers now, you know, because of close proximity of the face. And I think that laser can wait, but, uh, but, uh, you know, the issue with this injection therapy is that, uh, you know, it has to be continuous. Right. And uh, you know, what you gained, you know, initially, you don't want to lose, you know, the momentum because, you know, you don't treat patient for a couple of months. We split the team into, uh, you know, into two groups okay. so that we don't interact with, you, with each other. And, uh, you know, each of us, we work three days a week. Uh, so it's three days per week of, of clinic time. And then I think that the volume has dropped to perhaps 20%, 25%, one quarter of, of what we were seeing. But, uh, and, and out of that, whatever needs, needs treatment, yeah, will we'll then, you know, be shifted in a surgery. So which translates into like, you know, half OR day, you know. I've heard that a lot of posterior segment surgeons um, still are doing, doing work uh, in the OR. And unlike the, you know, cataract and refractive surgeons, 
because they can continue to work to some extent, um, commercially, they're almost buoying the industry right now. And um, what do you think uh, posterior segment surgery volumes will look like in the near future to midterm out from this? Well, everybody is foreseeing that once this is done, you know, that, that all these patients who either missed their appointments or delayed, that all of a sudden there will be a huge, you know, influx of yeah. of. But um, you know what? I think that, that we'll be able to handle that. Okay. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see it as, a, as, as an issue. In ophthalmology, because there are necessary surgeries that need to continue, maybe not the refractive side, but certainly, you know, the glaucomas, retina uh, procedures, et cetera, I wonder if, if our industry is bound to recover sooner than maybe other industries like airlines or um, other, other types. I would think so, you know, and, uh, and if you look at these, yeah, there are certain industries that will be hit very, very hard, but, you know, look at, let's say, delivery and food industry, you know, that's, that's uh -huh. going on, yeah, you know, video conferencing, right. that's going on, you know, what I, so, so I think that, that medicine, especially ophthalmology, will continue. Uh, it, it will be, you know, some, some rough ride for a bit, you know, but we'll follow the course. And uh, uh, certain things, you know, that we put into practice now, you know, will continue, such as telemedicine, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, like the setup for, for teleconsultation and, and not only by phone, but by, by video conferencing and uh, image analysis, you know, by, by you know, uh, sharing the screen with the patient, uh, you know, that I think will become more of a, uh, you know, of uh, practice. It's interesting that word telemedicine um, is just as hot as the word femtosecond was at one point in our industry, the word, uh, you know, bimanual was at one point. Um, so it seems like even even beyond say artificial intelligence, which which was which has been a buzzword, telemedicine seems like that is really the hot new topic of our field. It definitely is, you know, and and here in Middle East, it's it's actually used, um, you know, quite a lot. You know, there are various platforms, and it came to my knowledge that actually there is a huge competition in that area. Mm. That, that there are many companies, you know, that that have their platforms and. Uh, and, and offer it to hospitals and individuals, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, I, uh, you know, we, we have our own, you know, which is like run by Department of Health, Ministry of Health, but then, you know, there is another one that I signed up, you know, to provide private consultations, you know, and, uh -huh. and you can be from, from wherever. But to your point, you know, about this, you know, volume of patients, you know, what I think, you know, we'll be able to do and we can do is that if the really the volume in the next, you know, weeks, month after all this is clear is too high, you know, we can use telemedicine to, you know, lessen the burden of the clinic. Mm, you that's know, a good idea. Yeah, you know, so you can, you know, use extra time, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, you can... Uh, so, so that you, you, you do consultation and minimize the, the need for, for physical uh, visit. Uh, and, you know, yeah. I find it very, very useful, you know, like um, the only thing where you cannot use it is the first time patient, you know, because you okay. have to physically examine them. But follow up, you know, this is very useful for follow ups. Let's say somebody comes with, uh, you know, conjunctivitis or something and, you know, should come for a follow-up, you know, so you can do follow-up, you know, you using that, you know, or somebody has a sty, you know, or somebody needs glaucoma eye drops, you know, the person right. that you know, yeah. So, so all this is, uh, you know, very possible. Uh, you know, it's, uh, of course, telemedicine is diagnostic, it's not therapeutic. Uh, uh, even though we published a paper where it can be therapeutic, you can do retinal laser photocoagulation, you know, on a distant places. 
you have these home monitoring devices, you know, for retinal diseases, you know. Yeah. And it can be, you know, this grid that, you know, called Emsler grid that, that like, you know, checks, you know, the distortion in your vision. Of course, there are, you know, there is a push for homemade OCT, which looks like a telescope and, and you do that. And yesterday at this webinar, there was a French company who was presenting, a, you know, web application of like, you, you basically do do an exam at your own, you know, the, hmm. you know, on a, on a cell phone comes, you know, you are reading some from bigger letters come smaller, smaller, then it records your visual acuity, then it checks for distortion, you know, then, then that checks for pain, pain, and then at the end you get a score, you know, and then it tells huh. you, yes, you need to visit the ophthalmologist or not. 